to try to get started here. Thank you. I'm uh, Mike DeBerardinas. I'm the managing director for the city of Philadelphia. Um, at his inaugural, uh, the mayor, uh, I'm going to paraphrase the mayor just a little bit. He said, government works best when it's close to the people it serves. And we took our cue from that statement in many, many fronts, but in this instance on the citizen survey. So in 2016, for the first time in 10 years, the city of Philadelphia relaunched an effort to survey its citizens on perceptions of the quality of citywide services. The Office of Performance Management partnered with Temple University's Institute for Survey Research to conduct a comprehensive survey of residents' attitudes towards a wide range of city services. Today, after many months of work, we are releasing those results for all to see. Uh, this is important for several reasons. It's important that we in the government know what you, the residents, are feeling and experiencing. It is important that we make changes to our operations based on what you tell us about services that need improving. And it is vitally important that this be the start of a constant process of listening, not just once in a decade effort. So even as we unveil these results, plans are underway for a second such survey to begin at two, in 2018. So for today, our focus is on the findings of this first survey. And before we get into the numbers, it's my pleasure to introduce Mayor Kenny to talk about the survey and its importance. Thank you. All right, Thank, you. Thank you, Mike. Um, as you know, uh, Mike oversees dozens of operational departments with thousands of workers who are devoted to delivering a wide range of vital services to our citizens. And both Mike and I constantly hear from residents and visitors about every aspect of life in our great city, including how well or how poorly the government is performing. I said this when we launched the survey, and I repeat it now. Philadelphians are never shy about voicing their opinions, whether it's about sports or government or politics. Uh, the problem is, until now, the city has never studied those opinions in a systemic way to make improvements neighborhood by neighborhood. As some of, us here, some of us here know firsthand, in the world of politics, campaigns are constantly conducting surveys and polls, and in the private sector, focus groups and telephone, and telephone or internet surveys by companies are routine. So frankly, it is startling to realize that over the, la the last time the city of Philadelphia surveyed its residents was back in 2007. So think about that, one full decade between surveys, then that's far too long too long because the data that results from these surveys is crucial to improving those services. The results of this new survey make clear that residents appreciate and rely on these services, but at the same time, they're dissatisfied in many ways. Uh, in other ways, the survey shows how we've been, we've been doing actually better. That's what the survey is about, the city being willing to list city government, being willing to listen to its customers. We need to hear not just the praise, but also the criticism and to make changes needed to address the concerns. So as we release these survey results, I am reaffirming the city's commitment to fully address the issues identified in the survey. We will do a better job, and we will keep listening. Now on to the survey. I'd like to introduce our Director of Performance Management, Angelina Ruffin. She is a self-proclaimed data nerd, and I mean that in the all sense of love and respect, uh, who will slice and dice the numbers of the first semi-annual resident survey. So please, Angelina. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mayor Kenny, for that introduction. I'm so excited to be here today to share the results of the resident survey. Uh, this effort was led by the Office of Performance Management, again, as well with Temple University's Institute for Survey Research. So the results that I'm presenting today are going to be were largely analyzed by my office and um, the Office of Information Technology. I'm going to go really brief through the methodology, and just so I can get right to the results, and then tell you some highlights of what my office has been working on with other leaders of the city. 
I do just want to let you know that it's sort of, this is going to be high level, um, sort of like what you have in your hand, the four pager, but there's an extended report that is being released now and you can get that all the information you want out of there. So the survey was conducted in two different phases, one in the fall from September and October of last year. Once we got the preliminary results back, we noticed that it was highly skewed um, towards white, female, and also higher educated um, residents. So the mayor was committed to making sure we heard from all communities. And so we did a second wave of outreach to make sure that we have a more representative sample for, for Philadelphia. We are excited that our final sample comprised of 39% persons of color, we conducted the survey in a multitude of ways, in English, in Spanish, in paper, online, and through telephone. And we did weight the results by uh, the most recent census data available to make sure that the findings are generalizable to Philadelphia. Again, there's an extensive explanation and detailed um, report that's included in the final report. I do want to highlight our outreach methods, again, to make sure that the respondents were as um, representative of the city as possible. Initially, the mayor did a press release and a social media campaign. Um, and then for the wave that went out in the spring, we, and I say we because it really was a citywide effort of leaders who went out to 80 churches, mosques, um, schools in Latino and African American areas to talk and encourage people to participate in person. Um, we also put information out in all of our city buildings, our libraries, our rec centers, and um, did a num I did a number of interviews for um, Philly.com, Word, Aldea, The Tribune. In addition to that, city council also helped get the word out. They put surveys in their district offices and had flyers as well. And again, it was distributed in hard copy and in um, English and Spanish. You can see here where our respondents came from. We have, are, we're excited because we did have representation from all zip codes in the city. Uh, we did have higher participation from Center City and Southwest Philly. All right, here we go. The most exciting question that we asked on the survey was, what do you think are the top three services the city should focus on improving? This was an open-ended question, so respondents could write anything they wanted. Um, from then, our analysts went through all 7,200 um, surve uh, surveys and coded, went through and pulled out themes to figure out what residents cared most about. And of those themes, street repair, sanitation, and public safety rose to the top. We then took a look at the top three issues that were raised in 2007, and we found that even though the question was asked a little bit differently, there were similar issues, maybe in a different order. So in 2007, it was police protection and fire, neighborhood improvement and blight removal, and street repair. The next group of questions asked about thinking of where you live in the city. Please rate the following services that are provided. And then you could choose from a Likert scale, excellent, good, fair, poor, or don't know. I would like to highlight as we go into this section that um, we take these results very, very seriously, but it's important to, to just note that in our efforts to make improvements and identify opportunities for improvement, this is one data point that we're going to be using in addition to other things as we look to make improvements to services or change policies or programs in any way. I just wanted to provide that framing that this is per, uh, residents' perceptions um, and that we do take them seriously, but that it's like one thing that we're taking into consideration as we move forward. So overall, residents are generally satisfied with our services. Um, with 30, uh, sorry, with 83% rating it as excellent, good, or fair. In terms of public safety, 83% of residents rated police as excellent, good, or fair. 11% rated as, as poor. Of those who rated it as poor, 50% were black, 29% were white, 20% were other, 1% were Asian, 24% identified as Hispanic, versus 76% who died in Friday is non-Hispanic. Fire was one of, oh, sorry. I went to the wrong one. Fire was one of the most highly rated services with 75% of respondents rating it as excellent or good. 
Emergency medical services was also highly rated, with 73% um, rating it as excellent, good, or fair. Traffic law enforcement was the most, the lowest rated of all the public safety services, with 28% of residents rating it as poor. In terms of emergency preparedness, uh, residents were, didn't really know a lot about that and didn't really know how to rate that. So 48% rated it as I don't know. This side speaks to the questions that we asked that were specific about police in your neighborhood. So it asked, thinking about your police in your neighborhood, how do you feel about a number of things? So in terms of police presence, 70% were satisfied, rating it as excellent, good, or fair. 20% rated police presence as poor. Similarly to what I reported before, um, Blacks were most likely to rate police presence as poor. Whites were more, more likely to rate it as excellent. In terms of responsiveness, 68% of residents were satisfied. 19% rated responsiveness as poor, of whom 46% were black. In terms of location across the city, center city residents were most likely to rate police responsiveness as excellent or good, while Fishtown, Kensington, Port Richmond, and pretty much all of North Philly were most likely to rate it as poor. For approachability, 77% of residents were satisfied with police approachability, 19% were poor. Uh, residents are the least confident in police's ability to prevent crime, with only 58% of residents rating it either excellent, good, or fair. 28%, 27% rating it as poor, of whom 49% were black. In terms of streets, did I skip one? For street repair, 50% of residents are not satisfied with street repair, with 49% of residents rating it as poor. In terms of neighborhood trends, Fishtown, Kensington, Port Richmond, Lower North, and Southwest Philly are the most unsatisfied with street repair. Um, I'm not gonna steal Commissioner Williams' thunder, but we, do, we are working on this, and we do have a data-driven multi-year paving plan that I'm sure he'll talk about in a few minutes. Street cleaning was the poorest rated of all the street services, with 56% of residents rating it as poor. Residents in Fishtown, Kensington, Port Richmond, South, and North Philly were most unsatisfied with street cleaning. In terms of street lighting, this was the highest rated uh, street service. Um, there are some interesting demographics, though. Um, I'll just highlight that women were less likely to be satisfied with street lighting than men were. And then also, whites were more likely to be satisfied, and blacks were most, most likely to be uh, not satisfied. For snow removal, 66% of residents were satisfied, and 31% rated street, snow removal as poor. Again, Fishtown, Kensington, Port Richmond, and North Philly were the most unsatisfied with street, uh, snow removal. Center City, satisfied. For traffic signal timing, 80% 80, 80 rated it either excellent, good, or fair. 15% rated as poor. For garbage collection, 85% were satisfied, 14% rated as poor. Recycling was like the highest rated among residents with 88% uh, rating it as excellent, good, or fair, and less than 10% rating it as poor. For water, Philadelphians like our drinking, we like the drinking water. 76% were satisfied, 13% were unsatisfied with the drinking water. And uh, blacks were, blacks were le unlikely to rate it as excellent as good, whereas white were most likely to rate it as excellent as, and good. For parks and recreation, 82% of residents were satisfied with parks, with the quality of the parks in the city. For programming, 50% are satisfied, and 36% don't know about them. So there's definitely an opportunity there to do some better marketing about our parks and recs programs and classes. For our facilities, 51% rated as excellent, good, or fair, and 28% said they don't know. Blacks were most likely to rate rec centers as fair or poor. In terms of neighborhoods and economic development, there were a couple of questions on this. I think overall you can see that we need some more marketing for these services, uh, with 34% rating business services and assistance as good, excellent, or fair, 
18% reading it as poor and almost 50% saying they don't know how to read it. With permitting licensing, only 27% were satisfied and 18% reading it as poor and 56% saying they don't know how to read it. For health and human services, 51% of residents were satisfied, 10% reading it as poor and 39% saying they don't know. For behavioral health, 56%, 46% said they don't know how to read it. Um, Blacks were most likely to rate it as fair, excellent, or good, and whites were more likely to rate it as poor. For child welfare, here again, 53% said they don't know how to rate it, 32% rated it as excellent, fair, or good, 15% rated it as poor. For youth, I think there's definitely some more opportunities to market here, with 46% of residents saying they don't know how to rate it. Hopefully this will change with the managing director's out of school time efforts. In terms of code violations, this is still an issue um, with 85% of residents saying they think it's some kind of problem. In terms of demographic trends, blacks and others are most likely to say that it's a major problem in their neighborhood and whites are less likely. So just to recap, the services that are doing well meaning that less than 10% of residents rated it um, as poor, is EMS, fire, recycling, libraries, and public information services. Areas to improve, and that was basically categorized into the percentage, like 50% of residents rating it as poor or saying they don't know about it. Street repair, street cleaning, and parks and recs. Areas that we wanna better promote is definitely emergency preparedness, business services and assistance, permit and licensing services, and parks and recs programs or classes. The Office of Performance Management, I just wanna highlight some of the stuff that we're doing with leadership here. We're currently undergoing strategic planning with the Streets Department as well as the LNI Department. Um, this will encompass goals, measures, and you know plans for the next three years to improve. We're also doing some performance measure development with the public safety departments. This is also in collaboration with the budget office and finance office in effort to meet our new program-based budgeting goals. So we're coming up with robust additional measures that will help better tell the story of our public safety departments. In addition, our office provides survey development analysis support. So we're working with the out of school time initiative, um, and a number of other departments to sort of help them get more feedback about their services and programming. In terms of next steps, we're gonna to continue to work with department leaders on their strategic plans and their performance improvement projects. Again, assist departments with setting goals and measuring their performance. Support departments' efforts to improve their customer satisfaction. And then, of course, conduct the next survey, either next fall or the following January. Thank you, I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Sure. Uh, thank you, Angelina. And to give a little more context to the uh, Streets Department uh, data and statistics, I'm gonna bring our great commissioner, Carlton Williams, up. Uh, to fill out some of the data that Angelina had up on the screen. Carl. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Managing Director D. Bardinis, Mr. Mayor. Streets Department thanks the citizens for their participation and feedback as part of the Be Heard Residential Survey. And while the department endeavors to provide clean and safe streets in the most efficient and effective manner possible, we recognize there is a critical need to improve services that affect our citizens. Today, I would like to address three concerns as related to the survey under the department's purview. Street repair, street cleaning, and snow removal. Maintaining roadways in a state of good repair is a top priority for the department and the administration. And while the department strives to meet its annual paving goals, in the past, it has been challenged with meeting paving costs and utilizing the same crews for multiple projects. 
The administration also recognizes the critical state of our roadways and has committed an additional $5 million in operating funds specifically dedicated for this purpose for each year for the next five years and annually increasing our capital program investment to reach $35 million by fiscal year 2023. That's a $174 million investment over five years. These incremental increases to the budget and hiring of additional paving crews puts the department one step closer to reaching its goal of 131 paving miles annual, which will place our roadways in a state of good repair. Street cleaning. Litter and illegal dumping on our streets is a major problem, and the administration and the department recognizes the need for immediate change. Through the mayor's zero waste and litter cabinet, 31 recommendations for enhanced regulations, policies, and ordinances have been considered to be the most effective steps to move Philadelphia forward to becoming a litter-free, world-class city. At present, the department has aligned with several city agencies to perform litter indexing citywide. Litter indexing is critical because it allows us to target areas that have high indexes of, of litter, trash, and illegal dumping. This multi-agency effort is not just the streets department, but includes licenses and inspection, the community life improve, improvement program known as CLIP, SEPTA, the Philadelphia School District, and it offers a snapshot of each block, block by block, and provides a unique opportunity to target resources to those areas with high litter conditions. We believe that this is going to be an effective strategy, not only to get all the departments working together to address a citywide problem, but also to engage residents in the community to come up with long-term sustainable solutions to address our litter conditions and illegal dumping problems in the city of Philadelphia. Snow removal. The department's primary goal during winter weather emergencies uh, in keeping our 2,575 miles of roadway safe and passable. Our objective is to return Philadelphians to their normal business as quickly as possible and to provide safe conditions at all times. Although a snow event can offer distinct challenges, the department strives to provide passable roadways at all times. And we define passable roadways uh, classified as streets that is free from as much ice and snowpack as practical and can be traveled safely at reasonable speeds. Passable roadways should not be confused with dry and bare blacktop, which is essentially free of all snow, ice, and moisture from curb to curb. But we believe that this residential survey will not only uh, help improve our services to the city of Philadelphia and our citizens, but will allow us to and provide even better services going forward for the future. Thank you very much. And finally, finally, to um, give some context to the um, data on the police department, we have our great police commissioner here with us, Richard Ross. All right, good afternoon, folks. Uh, let, let me start out by saying that um, I, I couldn't be more honored to lead the uh, remarkable group of men and women in this department, both sworn and civilian. Uh, the things that they do each and every day uh, astounds me more than you can imagine. Uh, that being said, uh, clearly by the survey, uh, much of which didn't surprise us that much, uh, we have work to do. Uh, and I say that because uh, in certain neighborhoods, uh, particularly neighborhoods of color. Uh, there, there are issues as there are nationally, and in many, we mirror some of those national trends. Uh, so we are gonna work very hard to improve upon those things that are very real uh, with regard to the survey re results, as well as those things that uh, may be based in some perception. Um, so to start with, uh, our ability to prevent crime was one of the issues, and uh, we work very hard on crime prevention strategies. Um, we use real-time crime patterns to uh, target crime issues, um, employee targeted initiatives aimed at specific types of crimes. Uh, but I will say this, and, and I'd be remiss if I didn't, uh, in 2016, as you hear the mayor say quite frequently, uh, we did experience a 40-year low in part one crime. And so it's important to underscore that just so that we balance that with, with what the numbers actually reflect. Uh, but if there are issues relative to neighborhoods who perceive our ability to prevent crime, uh, there are still things we need to work on. And so those are things we're going to do uh, in conjunction with this survey. Um, in addition to which, one of the other issues was the level of police presence that are in certain neighborhoods. And, and a lot of people feel that they don't see the police enough 
Uh, so we, we have hired a number of officers over the last year or so, uh, put a, 100 on the street, um, and have another additional 360 in the police academy. And so as we get uh, many of those officers out in the field, I think this is one aspect of the survey that will uh, see a dramatic improvement. Uh, in addition to which, uh, we, we actively recruit, and we've got some great people in our background unit uh, who've been instrumental in improving our numbers, which is evidenced by the people who are in the academy right now. Um, approachability is one of the things that we do have to work on. Uh, we're running a campaign through professional uh, responsibility on dealing with courtesy and issues uh, similar to that. Uh, be uh, disingenuous if I were to suggest that you don't hear that complaint from time to time. Uh, but one of the uh, methodologies that we're using uh, kind of works in tandem with the uh, crime prevention strategies, and that's we're putting, uh, we've been putting a lot of officers uh, on foot beats coming out of the academy, in addition to which, uh, for the first time in our history, uh, many people have seen bicycle cops, but we have taken a cadre of officers right from the police academy. We've already started with 70 out of the last two classes, and they've gone right on uh, bikes. Uh, it's for both mobility, uh, because they're able to traverse their uh, respective areas a, a lot quicker, but still better contact with community than you would have if you were in a, in a police vehicle. Uh, so that's a strategy along with the uh, crime footbeats. So we will continue to work very hard uh, on the various aspects of this survey, uh, many of which uh, did not surprise me. It did not surprise me, as I stated previously, uh, along demographic lines. Uh, and so we have to, to work on this as not only as Philly PD, but in this profession. And, and so I don't think anyone was terribly surprised. Uh, the overall numbers uh, somewhat mirrored what we see nationally with re regard to overall satisfaction in policing. And uh, the trend certainly has changed demographically um, over the last two years. So these are things that are not lost on us, and we will continue to work on them. Thanks, Rich. So thank you, Rich. Um, if there's any questions around the, the, the survey and this methodology or from the, the departments that are here represented, this is the time to uh, put them forward. No, we'll, we'll, I'll let Carlton ask that. Right. Could you repeat the question? I'm sorry. I can. Uh, I, I can answer. Does that in response to the survey, or is that something that you all are already uh, I think that those uh, funds were already being discussed for, by the administration. We recognized the need to improve paving, um, but it, it was just supported by the survey results. <laughs> Anybody else? Well, I'll talk about my old for many years. I, I think um, when, I, when I heard the numbers of folks who weren't aware of the services and programs, I was a little surprised that that number was higher than I would have anticipated. Uh, but then when, when you think about it, we are a, like a very high focus on youth. And so if, if that's your sort of almost singular focus. It's not, but it's, it's the really high priority. That does uh, tend to, um, by the nature of the work, uh, not eliminate, but you don't, you're going to get that data back because folks just don't know what goes on at those centers and in the parks. But that's not to say that it's lost on, on the Park and Rec Department and me that we need to re try to respond to that, understand in more detail the data, and then sort of figure out how can we uh, sort of more uh, effectively promote the, the whole range of activities that are available in our facilities throughout the city. Okay, thank you all very much.